let's say for an extra hour and a half, how long does it take to count them? Or is how long can we expect to well, hear? Each from state has a different formula, a different way of doing it. Some have the old fashioned ballots, others have the touch screen, others some still still have those butterfly or hanging chads, if you will, the 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 the, the, the kinds of ballots that we're not supposed to so be we used. We could be conceivably waiting on Ohio and Pennsylvania until four or five in the morning. Or, 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 or longer. And the other thing, or if it's close, these provisional ballots, some of them, uh, some of the states have granted themselves, Larry, 10 days to count. They say, you know, we don't have to get back to you for 10 days. So if it's really close, we, we could be waiting. All right. Bob Woodward of the Washington Post is uh, over uh, in Washington, I assume. That's there right. You there you are. We see you in Washington. Bob, uh, yeah. this is a night that all of us are going to remember for a long time, but you've watched a lot of elections over the years. At this moment in time, what is going through your mind? Well, I think there's a lot of contradictory information out there, and Jeff Greenfield was rightly remembering uh, somewhat fondly and, and the, the searing memory of the Gore miscall, and I, I suspect there are uh, limitless chances uh, to m still get things wrong. So I think that you all have taken a Valium cooler or something, and everyone is being... Uh, careful and I think there's good reason to be careful you, you you're so uh, what I'm thinking about is it's important that uh, it be right rather than early premature and wrong do you have a feeling Bob at all what do you no, from what I, you I see think, so far do you have a gut well if if you look and you were talking about this uh, Democrats uh, like Clinton uh, and uh, Carter have won uh, only when they got some southern states. It looks like Kerry won't, but uh, you know the new uh, center of the Democratic Party might be the Midwest uh, if he carries lots of those states like Illinois and if Ohio comes in. But it, clearly uh, it gets down to Ohio and Florida and your people are saying there's not enough information to make some uh, projections. I think there's some contradictory information, like, and when you have that, you ought to just back off, and like you're what, wisely what, doing that. What do you read as contradictory as an example? Well, I just I think there's some exit polling that shows one thing, and then some of the hard numbers coming out of some of the counties in Florida seem to indicate something else, at least at this point. Now, again, it depends on what parts of the state you're measuring. So uh, when you get in that situation, uh, uh, you, we in the newspaper business, we always say, uh, when in doubt, leave it out. What does the Washington, I'm sorry, well, what does the Washington Post do if this goes all night? Do they, do they have a morning winner? What do they do? <laughs> they got to come out in the morning, right? Uh, they, they, they're as careful as anyone, and uh, they will make sure, and, and, you know, there's centuries of political experience there among the reporters and editors, uh, Dan Baltz and David Broder and Len Downey, the editor, and you, know, you can just hear them kind of saying uh, the old rule that the late managing editor had, which I said, if in doubt, uh, leave it out, or or don't go there and so I think uh, no one's going to be embarrassed uh, say you know we all worry about the famous uh, Chicago Tribune headline Dewey beats Truman no one wants that in their newspaper or on their network and I assume as, as cautious as the television networks are the newspapers Bob will be just as cautious in avoiding any kind of hard and fast conclusions when we simply don't have those hard and fast conclusions uh, that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, all uh, the, the headline in the Washington Post was unpredictable. Uh, and uh, that this is, and, and I think that's the case. And so take it slowly. I think people are still going to be watching. Uh, don't think you're going to lose your audience. There'll be, a, there'll be no mandate tonight, will there, Bob? Uh, there might be. I mean, this really? could, uh, sure, if, if Florida clearly falls and Ohio, uh, you know, falls the same way, uh, somebody's going to get close to 300 electoral votes. But, you know, let's wait and see. Uh, People are watching. I'm sitting here just listening to it and <laughs> enjoying it. Are you surprised uh, quickly, uh, Bob, that so far it seems to be going relatively smoothly out there across the country, although polls are still open in much of the country? Yeah, that's a great question. I uh, looked at the uh, picture uh, on the front page of the New York Times this morning of 
uh, lawyers and uh, election experts peering over ballots and it, I just my stomach fell because it reminded me of what happened in Florida four years ago and then you hear about the thousands of lawyers who are out there looking for trouble well those are thousands of egos uh, looking for trouble and uh, lawyers often think they solve problems with litigation or causing disputes uh, maybe they've also taken some of that uh, Valium cooler that you're <laughs> serving there. All right, Bob Woodward of the Washington Post, thanks very much. I want to take our viewers over and show our viewers what's happening in Canton, Ohio. Look at this picture. These are workers, election workers. They're counting absentee ballots in Canton, Ohio right now. These are volunteers. They're going through the process, a tedious process as we all know, but they want to make sure that every vote is counted. These workers in Canton, Ohio, counting voters right now. Let's take a look at that uh, as we go and we bring in a special guest Rudy Giuliani <laughs> uh, the former mayor of New York City Mr. Mayor sit down Our and join us who's actually here can you imagine we, we actually have a guest here well, in New he York City here. this is yeah, in fact, my, your my office. office my office is right across the street you, I wouldn't, can, hello you, there. you wouldn't know it Larry because he's been doing a lot of traveling yeah, lately. I, I haven't been here much in the last two weeks <laughs> you have worked your head off for Bush you have I gone have. everywhere what do you think so far is it what is it? I, I think uh, the president can, can win this election. Uh, you know, or can lose. Or, yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he can win it or lose it. There's no question about it. I have a tremendous personal devotion to him because of, of what he did for my city. And, and personally for me, the support he gave me and what he did for the city of New York, I am uh, enormously grateful to the man. I think he's What's been a great leader. Anything surprise you to this minute? Not yet. Uh, there's, not, there's been no surprise to this minute. This reminds me of a heavyweight uh, boxing match. You know, where you go through the first four or five rounds and everybody's real careful and everything goes as planned. So far, then, every state that we've projected was expected to go that everything, way. And everything went uh, as going according to the plan of uh, 2000, I mean, right? But so you must far, be I, disappointed that your city, New York, and we're in Times oh, Square right it. now, <laughs> and New York State went uh, overwhelmingly, well, uh, at, least, uh, at least according to our projection, it, it clearly went for John Kerry. But, you know, I'm used to it. The, the city's five, six to one Democratic and... Uh, you know, you, you, you got to really uh, struggle but, if you're a Republican in New York. there's a Republican mayor in New York. There's a Republican governor in New York. It could have gone the other way. We haven't had a uh, the state vote for Republicans since Ronald Reagan in uh, 80 and 84. That was the last, the last time. In fact, Ronald Reagan got a big win here in 1980 and a pretty good one in 84. Since then, it's been uh, straight Democratic. The dominant Republicans in New York are moderate, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's a little, yeah, yes, it's a little different. I mean, it's a little it, it, more like uh, what you'd see in California with Schwarzenegger. So you what know, are you going to watch for now? What are you keying I'm on? I'm looking at the same things you're looking for, Florida and, and Ohio. I was, I was in Florida all day yesterday, so I have a really good sense of uh, where to look for the vote. Well, I've been in Ohio, say? I think, four times in the last two weeks, so... You really went all out and, uh, well, and made a major, major push for the president. I, I really feel I owe the man. I mean, it's, it's, it's both political and personal, but I feel that he was, uh, he was there for us, and he's kept our country safe. I mean, the, it, it's something that everybody's been kind of reluctant to point to because we're all afraid there's going to be another attack, and I think there is going to be another attack. But you can't escape the fact that on September 11, 2001, and in the days after, I expected, everyone expected numerous attacks on the country. And George Bush's policies, I believe, and I think history will record this, George Bush's policies kept us safe. Thank God. Do you want this job? Do I want his job? No. <laughs> I know everyone wants his job. No, the, do you want the presidency? That's a good job. I mean, you get, you know, you get to comment. You don't have to have Ajita uh, worrying about whether you're going to win or lose. Right? Are you thinking about 2008? <laughs> no, I'm thinking about uh, tonight, and I'm not thinking... I mean, that's so far away. <laughs> you what, can't, what, if the president is reelected, would you like to come back in the federal government? You used to work no, in the federal government. No, I'm happy. I'm happy across the street at Giuliani Partners with Bernie Carrick and Tom Von Essen. And no, you wouldn't Richie want to be Scherer attorney general. And all, all my guys and attorney we're doing general. security attorney consulting general. all over the country. You don't want to be attorney general. I'm happy where I am. This is this. I know people have a hard time believing this. This is all done out of uh, personal loyalty to a. Uh, to a guy that I think is just one heck of a leader. Because as you, as you know, a lot of people speculating, pundits, that the amount of travel that you did going out, not only working for the president, but key races in the House and the Senate, that's designed to set the stage did for ever, 2008. Right. Do you ever think, among other things, I enjoy it? I mean, I like campaigning. Why do you think I ran for mayor of New York City? And I mean, I enjoy it. It was an honor to do it. It was tremendously educational. It was not about leading to anything else in the future. After going through prostate cancer, and after going through what we went through in this city, you know, just a few miles from here, 
I don't, I don't plan the future quite that way anymore. You know, you sort of, this was a great opportunity to get involved in a campaign for a man that I have tremendous respect for, George W. Bush. And that's, that's what it's all about. Did you expect closer in New Jersey? No. Did I, no, New Jersey, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, Pennsylvania, I, I have uh, more hope for from the Republican point of view. And obviously, Ohio, uh, Florida, Wisconsin, Iowa. Uh, Minnesota, those, those are the That's states. That's where it's that, going to uh, be decided, right? Absolutely. Those, 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 those five, states, six those states. Those states are going to decide it depending on, uh, on how, you know, how it goes. And will the country, no matter who wins this, yeah, come sure. together? Of course it's going to come together. Of course? Of course, absolutely. We're Americans. I mean, there's no, I have no doubt about it. I believe President Bush is going to win. I hope and pray for that. I've worked for it. John Kerry wins. He's our president. Both of them are going to get the support of the American people. They're going to get, they're going to get an opportunity to bring us together. And if they reach out to the other side, as I believe... Both of them will do. If president gets reelected. You put some Democrats in the cabinet, the way John Kennedy did, mm -hmm. the way President Bush, the way President Clinton did, or the other way around. If uh, John Kerry is elected, you put a few Republicans like a, like a Bill Cohen that you know Clinton put what in. What about a Rudy Giuliani? Nope, I'm here. <laughs> Giuliani partners across the street. But we do security can't... consulting all over the Wait world. <laughs> it's great. And it's also money making, isn't it? It, uh, it helps uh, take care of the, the college bills and everything else and, and the other, other things. That, the President uh, of the United States comes to you. It's hard to say no, as you know. It is. But that's something, you know, that's something that's... Uh, but you're saying no tonight. I'm saying I'm not interested. I'm, no, you never say no to the President right. of the United States. Absolutely not. Rudy. You can say no to Larry or, uh, or to you, Wolf, but you can't say no to the President of the United States. Thanks. Say no to us. What do you think of that? <laughs> he says no to I me, all the, he says like no to me all the time. I invite him on my shows. He keeps saying no. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Thanks very so. much for joining. You've got a beautiful city. We love being here at Times Square. As you can see, we've got a big crowd yeah. out there. Crossroads of the world. Nothing Capital like, of the world. Nothing like it. Isn't it? Greatest stick, city in the stick world. Stick around. Listen to Bill Schneider. I want to bring in Bill Schneider. He's got some exit poll numbers that he wants to share with us. Bill, tell our viewers and tell the mayor as well. Okay. Fear and anger were the two dominant emotions in this election. Fear of terrorism and anger over New York. And nowhere did they play together as significantly as here in New York, which we've already said has, is voting for John Kerry. But what's interesting is Iraq was a dominant issue more than terrorism here in New York. Let's take a look at how voters who said their top issue was Iraq voted. 85% of them voted for John Kerry, just 12% for Bush. Those are voters who were angry over the Iraq war, and they were more numerous than those who said they were concerned about terrorism. So in New York, despite 9-11, despite the tragic loss of so many New Yorkers, anger over Iraq was a more important emotion than fear of terrorism. Well, F fascinating information. I know you're collecting a lot more information from those exit polls. We'll check back with you, Bill Schneider, Anderson Cooper. You've got a projection. Got two projections to make uh, for you, Wolf. In Arizona, we can now project uh, John McCain, the winner there. No, uh, no great surprise, of course. John McCain. Uh, um, Winning again, uh, uh, widely expected to, of course, uh, perhaps have an interest in running for president in 2008 if President Bush does not win re-election. Also in the state of Wisconsin, we can project Russ Feingold, the winner. Uh, there had been some who thought that Tim Michaels might be able to, uh, to run a strong campaign against him. Didn't work out. Russ Feingold, the winner in Wisconsin. I want to bring in Amy Walter from the, uh, the Cook Political Report because we are monitoring a number of very close races right now in southern states, Kentucky, Louisiana, South Carolina, Florida, and North Carolina. Fascinating races all. Amy, let's start off in Kentucky. Jim Bunning, Dan Mangiardo, who knew? This is one of the most unexpectedly close races here. This was not uh, a race that we expected to be this close, simply because Bunning had an advantage going into the last few weeks of this campaign. Mangiardo just really couldn't get his campaign on the ground, didn't raise a whole lot of money. But Jim Bunning, Bunning is a, a sitting senator, a, a, a major league uh, pitcher from way back, 224 major league wins. He's had nine election wins so far. If he, if he pulls it out, this would be his 10th, but it is looking extraordinarily close, and they have been pouring millions of dollars into this race. That's right. The, the real question was, would the fact that Mangiardo got such a late start in terms of the outside money coming in, would that hurt him against Bunning, who had such a tremendous money advantage? Remember, though, um, in 1998, Jim Bunning won his race, his first race for the Senate, by um, only 6,766 votes. Mitch McConnell votes. has been campaigning very strongly yes. for him in the last week or That's so. Right. They are uh, almost full time. But uh, Bunning has made some stumbles, had made some comments that, that raised some people's eyebrows. He said he talked about the events of November 11th, not September 11th. Uh, and he said he hadn't read a newspaper in six weeks. We'll see if voters really cared about that. South Carolina, uh, pretty close, although right now Jim DeMint with 43 
50% of the precincts reporting, uh, seems to have a, a couple point lead over Inez Tenenbaum, a state election official. You know, again, state this education is, official, I should th say. exactly. You know, again, this is a state, North Carolina, Louisiana, Florida. These are all.